Okay, resume recording. All right, so first of all, welcome. Um, again, my name is Nia Benson. I am the Program Development Associate for Rush Education and Career Hub. And that is just a very fancy name of saying I do program coordination, I do program implementation, I do program development um, for uh, youth between the ages of 14 to 26. So basically uh, both high school and college level students, uh, typically undergrad. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is our college programs that are led by myself, um, another one of our uh, colleagues, her name is Dr. Reed, Dr. Monique Reed, she's the Associate uh, Professor and Assistant Dean uh, for the College of Nursing, and she's also the co-director for our Center for Community Health Equity Summer Scholars. She could not be here today, but I am going to be speaking on her behalf. And then lastly, this is not a program that we're going to speak of today, but I would love for you all to know about this program. The application isn't open. Um, and so I'm not going to speak on it too much, but we do have more programs here at Rush and especially Reach that we collaborate with. And um, that's going to be the Rush Summer uh, Research Scholars. Um, those are that program is particularly for students who are interested in going to like medicine, like specialty medicine, um, not in nursing, whereas uh, so other our other programs are a little bit more focused on whatever career or um, research or nursing. So just to give you a little background about the people who are a part of this program. So that way, if you want to shoot us an email one day or um, you want to find us somewhere on our website, reach at rush.org, you'll be able to find all our information there and send us an email if you have any further questions. However, I do handle all the programs. I do partner with all the programs, so I could answer a significant amount of questions today. But again, we're only going to be speaking on two programs today and not the three. Um, we've already talked about uh, uh, Rush Education and Career Hub a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and just get past that. But just know that we are very committed to our community and making sure that students from um, all areas uh, that are underrepresented in these healthcare fields get more experiences in them by uh, making sure that we provide programming that include uh, STEM enrichment, mentoring, as well as internship uh, programs and apprenticeship programs. We also help by providing students with certifications in certain, um, in certain entry level positions. So that way, when you go to college, you're able to uh, either uh, get your clinical hours and then also work in other areas or um, you know, start your career off where you want to be. This is not a program that is particularly uh, geared towards students who are in college. Um, we do take students who are, uh, or take uh, youth who are uh, going on different progressive tracks, which are in many cases everywhere. It's military, it's gap year, it's service programs, it's volunteer programs, it's going straight to work. We want to provide all students with those um, experiences. And so, um, we want to make sure that you all uh, know that so that way if there's anyone else that you would like to uh, present this program to and let them know that hey this is an awesome program because we are and i'll say it again we are uh please do so because we are awesome <laughs> all right so let's talk about the college career pathways program which is a program that i directly um uh, uh facilitate as well as uh, christy who is our co-facilitator and then we also have another uh, young lady, her name is Sierra. She uh, assists with our um, with our book club as well. And so we're going to go ahead and start with that, and then go into Center for Community Health Equity. All right. So first off, Center for uh, the College Career Pathway Program is a eight week internship program that is for um, motivated undergraduate students that are interested in healthcare. We are particularly um, more fortunate when it comes to students who are interested in clinical areas, but we also do non-clinical areas as well. So if you're interested in social work, if you're interested in, um, in um, program management, uh, finance, law, things like that, these are also areas which you can uh, come into when you're working with our program. The uh, summer internship is basically designed to give you all relevant hands-on job experience. Um, provide you with uh, on-the-job training, provide you with opportunities to gain industry-related credentials um, for any student who is willing and ready to do this. We are going to be accepting um, 25 students this year. It says 22 here, but actually we're going to be accepting 25 students, which is a very big uh, jump because at first it was 12, and then I got us all the way to 20, and then we got to 22, and I done pumped it up to 25. So um, that's super great, but that also means that um, the program is still going to be as competitive as it is naturally is. Um, not as competitive as CCHE, but definitely, definitely competitive programming because we have students from all over the country who are eligible for this program. And um, a select few of you uh, complete the application program in order to do interviews. 
Um, and so just remember that when you are applying for this program that uh, this is a very competitive program. And so not getting in is not a problem, but we definitely wanna make sure that students who are uh, motivated to do this program and work with us throughout the summer and summers to come, because this is not just a one-year program, it's actually a two-year program um, that you're able to do so. So some things that you should expect uh, with this program is basically gaining hands-on uh, learning by working alongside medical students, nurses, doctors, technicians, um, uh, office staff, things like that. Um, gaining some community uh, engagement experiences. Um, basically, you're going to be having the opportunity to uh, work within the community. We do a lot of different volunteer opportunities, such as One Box, One Community, which is a um, food uh, distribution uh, program that allows uh, our students to participate in making sure that we give out food to the community. Um, for some reason, it's kind of weird right here, but uh, you're going to be able to earn uh, industry recognized credentials. We do phlebotomy, CNA. Um, we're going to be bringing along uh, medical uh, interpretation. Um, and I believe we're also gonna be doing pharmacy tech as well. Um, I'm trying to think about what else. Oh, and we also have IT uh, certification as well that we will be providing for students who are interested. Um, of course, you're gonna be connected with STEM and healthcare uh, workers and mentors. We are gonna be doing a mentorship this year, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, oh, why did I say that twice? And I believe the last one is supposed to be, uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but it said it twice. Uh, the last one is, is supposed to be, you're also gonna be able to get paid for this program. So this is a paid internship program. I do not believe in uh, providing internship programs without pay. I believe that all you students uh, come in with some level of uh, competency that is um, uh, beneficial to every department and where you are benefiting a company, the company should be benefiting you at least financially. And so uh, this program is gonna be paid for you all. Um, you typically spend your time in the hospital about 32 hours a week, um, either uh, doing a multitude of things. So first off, you're going to be doing at least a minimum of 24 hours in the department's hands-on without my direction. This is going to be completely and utterly directed by the department staff and what you're going to be doing and what um, job duties that you're going to be handling. We do try to make sure that students get a job description for each department that we have to kind of give you a a thought process about what they may have you do on the floor, but sometimes you do way more than that and sometimes you do way less. So it's kind of up to the department. We give them complete autonomy about where and, where, and what they want to do with you. Uh, we just tell them what they can't do with you, which is basically, you know, uh, working with bodily fluids, um, doing anything that will put you in harm's way, uh, making sure that you have um, EEP for, uh, uh, for any type of like risky areas, because sometimes our uh, our students work in COVID areas. Um, they have in, a, in previous years, and so we want to make sure that they have all the protections that they need. PPE, Lord, I say EEP. I'm over here living my life in college. Jesus, take the wheel. Okay. Um, some departments that you could be uh, placed in. We also we have radiology. We have clinical engineering. We have the uh, recovery room. Uh, we have a couple of research areas. We have a couple of ICU areas. We have a recovery ICU area, the OR, and a lot more. We also have daycares. If you're interested in veterinary medicine, we also have that area. And then we have a bunch of non-clinical areas. But nine times out of 10, um, between both the main Rush campus, which is on Ashland and Harrison and the Rush Oak Park campus, and we might be also adding the uh, Rush Aurora campus. Um, students are mainly in a lot of clinical areas, but we do have non-clinical areas and we have non-clinical staff who are interested in taking on students in the uh, office areas. Um, some of those might be um, our psychiatric area, which is a uh, outpatient area. A couple of outpatient areas uh, definitely take on students to do more non-clinical work. Um, Again, you all will be uh, compensated for both your summer and winter break because this is a two-year program. We do offer our internship for students between the summer eight weeks and then the winter for four weeks. And then students will get up to about $5,000 before taxes. And I do mean before taxes because I know a lot of y'all like to do math, but nobody knows the percentage of taxes that the city takes out on, okay? So I'm just gonna tell y'all now that if this is before taxes, so whatever the city wanna take out of y'all checks is up to them. I have nothing to do with that, all right? Just wanna be clear about that. All right, and then this is just some pictures of some of our students and what they've done. Um, you can see Christy sitting right there uh, in uh, the anatomy lab. We are gonna bring back the anatomy lab uh, sooner rather than later, uh, where the students from our CCP program actually uh, dissected human cadavers. If you haven't taken an anatomy class and done that, 
please understand that it is not for the weak. You have to have a strong stomach for that, but it is absolutely mandatory. <laughs> All right. So uh, for this program specifically, the eligibility requirements include that you must be uh, enrolled in a two to four uh, institution or be a part of some type of programming that um, is for your age level. So if you're in a gap year program, that's a, a situation that you might be a part of. If you're in like a work level program, like Europe, we also take Europe students, uh, Chicago Scholar students, um, any type of programs like that, we are we're definitely uh, part of that as long as it's a post-secondary program or post-secondary um, uh, work-related uh, situation, we will take those students as long as they have flexibility within the schedule to make sure that students are doing these things in the summer. Um, rising undergraduate students between sophomore and senior. So you have to have finished your first year in order to be a part of this program. So you can't be in the in-between between like your senior year of high school and your freshman year of uh, college. You have to have completed your freshman year or you're in your freshman year right now and you're gonna be completed by the time of summer. Um, 2.5 uh, GPA is gonna be another requirement that you might have. And then also uh, you must complete a health screening. And I wanna be particular about um, the, uh, uh, what is it called? The uh, marijuana cannabis testing. So if you smoke, ain't none of my business, baby. Go ahead, do you. But I want you to understand that um, just because it is legal in the, in the state that these jobs do not care, Rush is one of them, um, that they still test for marijuana and it can possibly put you at jeopardy of your job. Um, and not only just the job of being a part of this internship, because we do hire all the students on, but also the job in any rush uh, uh, area, because um, if you are tested with marijuana in your system, you won't be able to apply for another position at rush for at least a year. So I just want to make sure that you all understand that be before you start testing, because I have a lot of students who, you know, go through the process and then once the drug test come back, it's not clean and they don't have any medical card or any medical reason on why they don't have it. And so um, they, won't, they weren't able to participate in the program at the very last second. And uh, that's unfortunate, but like I said, y'all gotta read them laws. The them, uh, marijuana laws are very specific about who is allowed to discriminate for marijuana and who isn't. And employment areas are very much so allowed to discriminate for marijuana. Um, also, I want to make sure that if anyone is undocumented or DACA or um, um, uh, any type of immigrant status where maybe they are uh, sanctuary um, uh, folks, you are more than welcome to apply for this program. Um, if you do not have a social security number for whatever reason, I don't care. You are still a part of the, uh, the program if you want to be a part of it. As long as you can complete the application, complete the interview process, and press us, um, we will find a way to get you paid. It does not matter. Um, and then last but not least, some of the things that might be uh, preferred, but it's not required, is uh, that you all uh, have like your CPR certification, if you could possibly get that beforehand. If you do not, we will make you do it during your orientation week if you get selected for the program. And then um, there are some rush anchor mission communities that we uh, specifically work in in the city of Chicago. And so if you are from any of these zip codes, specifically in the uh, Chicago or Oak Park area, we uh, cater to those students. You don't get a great chance of being a part of the program, but you do get a higher chance, maybe like a 5%, 10% chance more of being looked at a little bit more favorably because you are part of these communities. And we wanna make sure at least 20% uh, of our programs, uh, program students are from this uh, Anchor Mich Acre, uh, Community Mission Program, uh, community uh, zip codes. And so also if you've been a part of our high school programs, you also have a more likely chance of being a part of our programs as well. And so if you've been a part of Meds and Pathways, Meds and Explorers, any one of our elementary school programs that we might have available, um, if we see you on a roster somewhere and you've come back to us, you also have a more likely chance of being a part of our program, okay? Um, and before we get into how to apply, I'm gonna go ahead and go into uh, CCHE uh, program for the Summer Scholars because we all have the same process on how to apply and all the dates are the same. So the Center for Community Health Equity is also a eight week internship program for highly motivated undergraduate students who are currently in their junior or senior year or possibly they're graduating this year. So whichever one you wanna do. Um, basically you have to have a strong interest in research because this is a very heavy research-based program. Um, we're gonna be dealing with health disparities. We're gonna be dealing with community relations. Um, this program is a little bit more favorable towards students who are um, social workers, nursing, um, and anyone who is interested in like community allied health type pro uh, uh, type careers, 
they're a little bit more favorable towards that. Um, but this is going to be a, the most highly um, the most highly competitive program because technically we only have four spots um, and we typically only have four spots, but over 100 people apply, over 200 people apply sometimes. And so this is very, very competitive. The process for application is basically the same as CCP. And um, I would advise that if you are interested in doing research before you get out of college or before you go to grad school, before you go to nursing school or whatever the situation may be, that you definitely apply for this program if you are eligible uh, as a junior or a senior. And then um, if you want to do CCP later, you can absolutely do that. And then you'll have a more favorable chance of being a part of CCP because you've already been a part of this program. So if you want to strategize properly, do it right, because this is only a one-year program where you can do CCP for a two-year program later on. So. Just give me y'all little tips. If you're a freshman or a sophomore, do CCP, then go to CCHE. If you're like in your junior year, do CCHE and then come on over to CCP later on next year, okay? Um, this year, we're actually going to increase the number of students to six. So I did, um, I've been uh, pimping some people out for some more money to pay y'all. And uh, now we have a, a fund that is worth for uh, six people now. So instead of us only taking four people, we are gonna be taking six. So that's a lot of work. That, that was a lot of work to get the last two people. You don't even understand. You don't even understand. But what should you expect from uh, this program as a summer scholar for CCHE? Um, it's heavy, heavy research-based. So if you are not interested in research, this is not the program for you, but it's definitely heavy research-based. Um, you're gonna be under trying to understand a lot of historical structural inequalities that impact healthcare. And you're gonna be doing your research paper uh, about that with uh, members of your um, program. And so typically it's only gonna be one um, group that's doing one project, but if we take on six, we might actually do two groups. And so we'll see how that goes. Um, you're gonna be developing team-based re research project uh, centered around West Side communities. So those zip codes that I talked about beforehand, that's what you're gonna be technically writing on. And then you're gonna be gaining a lot, and I do mean a lot of writing skills in order to um, submit a research paper for review and learn about like the IRB, going through the IRB process, things like that. And so um, this is gonna be a very formal um, entry level process to kind of understand what it's like to research on the um, college or the graduate level um, for medical programs or for community uh, community level research. And so if you're interested in that and trying to get some type of um, research experience, this is definitely for you. Some things that you will have to think about when spending your time is um, you are going to be doing this 40 hours a week, basically conducting research, collaborating, attending lectures, networking with healthcare professionals, and very much more. Um, you'll have some time with myself. You'll also have some time with the CCP students um, for our Monday bi-weekly social meetings where we talk about absolutely nothing because sometimes it's just, it's just needed to not talk about programming and sometimes. Um, and so I direct those. And then you'll also be working with them um, and working with all other programs around this, around the Rush campus to go to a couple of lectures that might be combined. So we all work together at Rush in order to provide similar experiences. So that way you don't feel like you're missing out on something by not being a part of another program. Um, again, you're gonna be uh, doing some community engagement work. A lot of your community engagement work is gonna be based on your research. So you'll actually be going into the communities to talk with people to actually do your research um, interviews and things like that. And then you'll also be compensated for this. Again, it is gonna be uh, $5,000 before taxes. And then you'll get your payments bi-weekly because we hire you on as um, employees at Rush. Again, uh, you must be at a two to four year institution. Um, again, this is for juniors and seniors. So make sure that you are in your right year to do it. We have had, um, uh, students who are uh, rising juniors go into the program. Alexia was one of those people who had uh, um, definitely been a part of the program prior to, and she was at that age level, but she was all, but she was already at the um, knowledge competency as well as the maturity level for this type of program. So she did absolutely well. Wave, Alexia, let me know that you're here. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There she go right down the pink. Look at her. <laughs> Um, and so there is always a chance that if you are a rising junior that you'll be able to participate, but it's not always guaranteed. Um, but definitely another thing, because you are going to be hired on, again, you need to complete a health screening, which also means you need to pass a drug test. And again, 
for the reasons that we've already said, that's why you need to make sure that that is gonna be something that you uh, preference on. If you would like a little tip from me personally, because um, me personally, I don't care about a lot of those things. Uh, as long as you bring your butt to work and you're a respectable student, go for it. But uh, marijuana stays in your system for 90 days, just, just so y'all know, all right? Um, and now let's talk about how to apply. So for both of these programs, uh, applications are already open. They opened uh, on December 6th. Um, and they will be closing February 18th. So if you are, um, you're, if you're out of school now, if your finals are over, first off, congratulations for finals being over, but also uh, make sure you take some time to go to the application on our website and start filling out the application. Um, for CCHE, there are a lot of um, heavy questions when it comes to like short answers. So you definitely, you definitely, if you wanna participate in that program, you wanna spend a lot more time in that. But for CCP, um, this is going to be a bigger focus on your interview skills um, because the application doesn't have that many questions when it comes to like uh, doing some type of essay. But you do need to provide all of your information, which includes like your state IDs, driver license or passports, whichever one you have. Uh, making sure you have your immunization records, make sure you have your transcripts, things like that. So you'll have to get a lot of different materials for your application. So you want to go through that, make sure you know what you need to um uh, get access to is including your COVID uh, vaccination cards. Please make sure you have your COVID vaccination cards uh, ready to submit because we do need that in order for you to be eligible for the program. And um, make sure you go through those questions really uh, simply. Our interview week is going to be through uh, between March 14th to uh, March 25th. So that's a two week span. Interviews are an hour and they are a group um, panel interview. Okay. So what that means is, is that you are going to be interviewing with other individuals who are interviewing for this program, as well as the fact that you will see multiple interviewers there, okay? So myself, uh, Christy, Alexi, and a couple of other uh, staff members are gonna be there um, viewing your interview. Um, you're only gonna be interacting with myself as an interviewer, but there are gonna be multiple interviewers uh, watching your interview, but you are gonna be typically um, put in a pair of five people. And my tip for you for interviews is definitely practice, practice, practice. Um, stand out, but also learn how to blend in. That's the only tip I can give you right now. Stand out, but also know how to blend in, okay? Um, and do it and do it gracefully. That's all I ask, <laughs> okay? So um, definitely go go around, um, start asking people some tips for how to do group interviews. It'll help out a lot, a lot. Um, our pro, our orientation week starts uh, June 13th to the 17th. Um, between that time, you'll have orientation and you'll also have other training programs. You might have a professional development program, uh, a professional de development workshop on those times. So that's just a time for us to get workshops out the way. It's time for us to get you like EPIC certified, things like that. Get it on out the way so you can have it ready for when you go on the floors. Um, and then um, both, all, both programs are gonna be started on June uh, 20th and then they're gonna be ending August 12th. Um, in the meantime, between time, you're going to have a lot of uh, work that you're going to have to do after um, you know when you got if you got accepted in order to kind of complete the uh, rush application, do your health screening, get all your uh, stuff done so that you can be a respectable rush employee. Um, final details about our programs is that um, you can apply to our program at reachatrush.org slash college. Um, if you go to that website, you'll be able to see a lot of our programs that we uh, participate with. Not only do we run them, but we also participate with. If we participate, if we run those programs, you will see the application on the website. If we do not run those uh, applications, you will see the website link to the other uh, programs website. So that way you can apply to them. Um, please make sure that you have your resume, your medical records, your official transcripts for both programs that you can submit and your uh, vaccination card. Again, make sure you have your vaccination card. It's going to be super important that you are vaccinated because we are in person all the time. For CCP, we have always been in person. COVID hasn't stopped a thing for us because if you are interested in healthcare and you're serious about your career in healthcare, you have to understand what it's like to work in a pandemic because this can happen 20 years again down the line. Um, applications are due once again, February 18th. And then applicants will receive uh, final decisions no later than May 1st. I'm gonna move that to like May 8th because May, the beginning of May is kind of awkward, but it's typically the Friday, the first Friday of the month that we try to get those, um, those decisions out there that you all can um, uh, have those in ahead of time and start to do your process for um, 
your, what's it called? Start to do your process for Rush to get uh, hired on as an employee. And um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about this, you can always email us at reachcollegeprograms at rush.edu. You can also call us at 312-942-3634. And you can just go to our website and look at all the programs that we do and everything that we kind of provide. Um, more videos, pictures are gonna be put up really soon. Our website is gonna be updated sometime by, uh, next, uh, by next year in 2022. And so you'll have a lot more to look at as time goes on, but we're definitely gonna be doing some more with our college programs to make sure that you all um, kind of understand what uh, what you're yourselves into because this is kind of what this is for. And so now that we have kind of gone through everything, I want to thank you all for joining us. And I am going to um, stop our recording here. So that way uh, we can answer some Q&A situations.